.NET MAUI Preview 12 is here, introducing a whole bunch of new features, including my favorite, which is a community contribution, which is constructor injection when you're using Shell. That's right, it's built in from start to finish, including navigation, which many of you have asked about, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works today and how you can get started, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back this time talking about .NET MAUI Preview 12. Preview 11 just officially came out not too long ago, but Preview 12 is here. It happens every single month, there's a new preview. This one doesn't have like fundamental crazy changes, but there's some really neat things built into this preview and specifically constructor injection when using shell. Now shell is sort of an opinionated way of building out an application. I'm really hoping that the team just as it you know gets closer to completion uses this as the default uh, method with file new teaching it from start to finish. I love it. I did a whole video on it. Uh, why I love shell. I'll put it right here. Uh, you can use shell today uh, with uh, .NET MAUI. You can just take a Xamarin form shell and just change a few namespaces really easy. Just go check out the documentation. I'll put it down there below. All right. But here's why this is really, really cool. I've talked before about how to use the built in sort of dependency service of the host builders. So if you're used to ASP.NET core, it's the same dependency injection stuff, but it's been a little bit trickier to do constructor injection for your view models and under dependencies that you may have. Um, so what I want to show you today is how you can just start using it uh, and you know, kind of architecture application without shell. But then I want to show you shell and some of the new features as well. So let's check it out. As always, David has an amazing blog post over on the .NET MAUI and .NET blog. I'm talking about the new features. There's a bunch of new stuff, specifically brand new documentation, all sorts of good stuff here. Accessibility, app startup, data binding. I mean, all sorts of good stuff, graphics, controls, all sorts of good. I mean, look at this. I mean, there's all sorts of great stuff in here. So you can start like learning about the Blazor web view, for example, and how to add it into your application or build a new one all sorts of amazing stuff. So really happy to see this start to continue to roll out so people can start building apps with .NET MAUI. Some other things that are important here, some Z index, compatibility handlers. This one's really important. The .NET 6 unification of iOS types. Frank and I will be talking about that on Merge Conflict in the future, so definitely um, head over there. But if you're building older libraries that use things like nfloat and nint and things like that, you probably need to do some some reworking of those of those NuGet libraries or things like that. Most people may not have to worry about them, but if you're doing a lot of graphics, you may have to worry about that for iOS and Mac, so check that out. There's also this new extended toolbar over here. They have the non-shell, they're gonna be working on shell soon. But more importantly, actually when you scroll down, um, there's a focus on shell. I wanna I want talk that in a little bit and show you what this means because what it means is in the podcast app you can do really cool things such as constructor injection which is really cool so let's first head over to just a file new project nothing really crazy here um, this is file new i made this app a while ago i'll put a link to it i think it's called like maui app dependency injection or something like that and it has labels and buttons you can click on them but more importantly is the code behind we have a main page that takes in a counter view model that we'd want to constructor inject in. And then here we have a counter view model and it just has an I command and you can click on it and things like that. So nothing really substantially crazy different over here, right? We have this bindable object. This is code that was from like preview two that I've upgraded to preview 12. Um, but um, I haven't changed any of the core foundation because if we look inside of the app, I'm actually going to inject the main page into the application as well. So that'll want to be in, injected in. And if I go into the Maui, Maui program, we can see that the use Maui app is the code that probably is in your .NET Maui application that's being injected in. So what we have to do down here is add in these singletons. Uh, so there's a single uh, main page and a single counter view model. Um, and when we build that up, it'll get injected in. So for example, if I add a breakpoint over here, and um, let's say add a breakpoint over here, we can see that I'm, I'm not newing up any pages at all, nothing crazy like that. I am registering these singletons with the built-in dependency injection, and sure enough, 
this is what happens. It gets injected into my application. My main page gets injected in and I don't have to do anything at all. Okay. Now that is just built in dependency injection over there. So if you're using like an activator or you basically want to grab, um, an item from that dependency service bucket, things will be injected in that is constructor injection. And this is very similar if you use like prism or ASP.NET core or other frameworks that have this built in. It's really nice, especially when you're doing things like, um, interfaces, you want to inject in things into your unit tests. This is really great, but let's take a look at the podcast application because that uses shell. So let me pop this down here. Specifically the shell is a tab bar and we have things like a discover page. We have a listen later page, a subscriptions page over here. So this is the shell with the, the bottom tabs of the application. Now, previously, what you would need to do is take a look at, let's say the discovery page. And over here, it would have a discovery view model. Now, previously I was creating it in the XAML. Now I'm passing it in as a constructor parameter. And if we look at the discovery view model, we can see that now the discovery view model has three things being injected, a show service, subscription service, and a categories view model. Okay. So that is nice. Previously, we'd have to like reach into a bucket and grab it out and have it inflated and all these things. But in nowhere am I creating a new discovery view model or am I creating a new show service or a new subscription service or anything like that. In fact, what's cool about this is if we look at this services extension, we can see that I configure my services and on that builder, I add my blazer view model. I add a singleton, I add an HTTP class. I'm actually doing uh, different, uh, switches here, basically to add audio interfaces and, um, connectivity services. And here we have different, uh, transient and singletons and scoped services in here as well. So all sorts of just services that I would use. Now, what I've done in the podcast app, which I'll link into the show notes is I've added a view model extensions that registers every single view model as singletons. So I just have one of these view models. Now you could sort of decide what's the scoping or the transient. If you want them to be a singleton or you want them to be a transient and create new ones, totally up to you. But here's, what's neat about this is that the Maui program now has our builder and I could have added all those right here but I have these little configure extensions, configure extension essentials, configure services, configure view models. All right. So this is my builder. It registers everything inside of there and then it just handles it automatically. So for example, if I put a breakpoint here or a breakpoint on this thing, we can see it happen. But I also want to mention what's neat about this is that it works with query parameters. So here's the episode detail, for example, where I pass in via a URL, the ID and the show name. All right. And what's cool is that it will pass those parameters, but also still call my constructor at the same time. And it will pass in all of my services here, which is really, really cool. And also note that the discovery service also takes in another view model. So it's cascading down the line of how these properties um, and, and these constructor parameters are being injected into the application. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Here's our podcast app. And look at this. If I go ahead and just look at this, we have our, we have our shows, we have our subscription service, our category services here. And sure enough, our category services has a bunch of other stuff built into it too. Down here, our discovery view model pipes in our view model right here, which has all of those things on it. And then our application pops open and sure enough, you're right there, which is really, really cool. And I can show you, um, exactly what one of those, um, um, URLs look like, right? So here we have our category page passing it in a category ID. So when you pass via URLs, it will also cascade down and do that constructor injection for you automatically, which is pretty mind boggling and awesome. So, so that way you're not just creating a new page, you're letting shell handle the creation of those pages. And then of course, actually trickle down those query parameters at the same time. So then it's up to you, right? If you look at your view models here, do you want those to be singletons? Should they be transient? So they're creating a new one every single time. 
totally up to you based on your application. And if you've used ASP.NET Core before, then you should be pretty familiar with this as well. But now you have a full application up and running and working all here 100%, uh, which is really, really cool, all using constructor injection and a bunch of other things built into .NET MAUI Preview 12. All right, I didn't want to take too much time, but I wanted to show you this awesomeness that I simply love. I think it's so unbelievably cool. I'll put links to the blog post, to my simple application resource, and to this .NET um, podcast application, which I've shown off quite a few times here. Um, but I spent some time this week updating it to, to .NET MAUI Preview 12 with this new stuff. And I think it's just so neat. I'm really excited for the future of where .NET MAUI is going. If you have any questions, at all, please leave a comment down there. I would super appreciate it. Uh, I'm really excited about all this stuff, as you can tell. I love it. Um, and I hope you catch me on some of my live streams. I have stuff coming up, uh, usually on Fridays around 8 a.m. right here on YouTube, and all the live streams are available too. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd super appreciate that. Helps the channel, helps other people find the video too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe because I come out with the new videos every single week right here on YouTube. So until next time, I'm James, and thanks for watching. Ooh, I almost forgot. One thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people have had some issues with templates, kind of them not being up to date. So one thing I wanted to tell you really quick is that I figured out how to fix this thing uh, with some help from John Dick over from the Down at Maui team. The issue here is sort of if you've installed templates for your Maui check or for the CLI and then installed Visual Studio, sometimes the CLI version is older than what Visual Studio installs, but it is the default search location, so it wins out. So let's go ahead and fix that up. Now you can tell what templates you have installed by going into your user directory, and there's this dot template engine folder. If you go in there and see packages and you see a bunch of Maui stuff in here, delete this folder, just delete it, okay? Additionally, make sure you run this command, dot net new u dash u Microsoft Maui templates. This will go ahead and uninstall the templates as well. Do this all while Visual Studio is closed and then simply open up Visual Studio. Now you're not gonna remove the Visual Studio template because that is stored in a completely different area, all right? So when you go and create a new project after you run these commands, you wanna make sure that you see the .NET MAUI templates with the .NET MAUI icons on them. So as soon as it loads up here, since I've run all these commands and it's re-indexing everything, what we should see ideally are the .NET MAUI templates. One, two, three. You can double check this, of course, by coming into your command line and going in, let's say CD to your desktop, make dir test 12, CD test 12, and then do .NET new MAUI. And when you run this command, it should just create it and it shouldn't be updated at all. Didn't tell you there's an update at all because it will use the one that Visual Studio installed that's way easier in general. So anyways, that's how you fix it. Cheers.